Hey guys, TrueGreen7 here, and over the last year and a half I've explained the origins of all starter Pokemon, Pocket Monsters with similar inspirations, and the etymology of many Pokemon names. And now I'm ready to explain the origins and names of all legendary and mythical Pokemon. In this video, I'm just gonna cover the first three generations. But keep in mind that every single speculation as to the inspiration of all these legendaries won't be addressed, since some are far-fetched or redundant. I also won't cover the in-game lore of these Pokemon, and I'm probably gonna mispronounce a few foreign creatures. Features. But you know what they say, just get over it man. And once again, mythical Pokemon are included. And now let's begin with the winged mirages, the phantom wings themselves, the legendary birds. The mystical Articuno's name comes from the Arctic, Zapdos's name comes from Zap, and Moltres comes from Molten, which describes anything liquefied by heat. But their names also follow the well-known pattern of numbers in Spanish, uno, dos, tres. Articuno appearance-wise resembles the mythical Rock, or Ruck, or Ruck, or I don't know, Rucky McRuckerson. It looks kind of like this bird, and the cute little Quetzal. But anatomically, it looks incredibly similar to the white-throated Magpie Jay. Maybe it also looks like a cockatoo, or maybe I just wanted an excuse to say cockatoo. The instinctive Zapdos could be based on the Native American Thunderbird legend, or the mythical South African Lightning Bird, both of which summon lightning from their huge avian bodies. Among certain African tribes, the hammer crop is believed to be the physical manifestation of the lightning bird, which could have definitely inspired Zapdos' design. The Valorous Moltres, like ho -Oh, is mostly based on a certain phoenix. Maybe the one from Arabian culture or the Slavic firebird, perhaps the Vermilion bird. We may never know, but its appearance may be based on the heron bird, a crane, or Bennu, the ancient Egyptian deity linked with the sun and rebirth. So basically a phoenix. Mewtwo is the first successful clone of Mew, and that's why it's Mewtwo, not Mew7 or Mew3 fourths. Mew's name may come from Myo, which is Japanese for strange or unusual, or the sound a kitten makes, referring to its cat-like appearance. Maybe mutant or simply the Greek letter mu are relevant. It looks like a cross between a gerboa and a cat, but it does seem to refer to the discredited recapitulation theory, in which embryos tend to develop through stages that resemble stages of evolution from their ancestors. You never know, this may be intentional considering Mew is the ancestor of most Pokemon. Mewtwo, on the other hand, looks like a heavily gene-spliced Mew, with just a hint of grey alien. Okay, on to Generation 2. The legendary beats- uh, Oh, sorry, there was a typo in my script. The legendary beasts each have different origins. Raikou is basically an amalgamation of different thunder and lightning deities, but most primarily the Japanese Raiju. It physically resembles both a saber-toothed tiger and a Bengal tiger. Its cloud-like cape isn't just for style, it's supposed to invoke an image of a cumulonimbus cloud, often associated with thunderstorms, which Raikou is pretty familiar with. His name could come from the Japanese word for lightning, or Rai, the Japanese word for thunder, and Ko, meaning emperor. Entei resembles Chinese guardian lions, often mistakenly called foo dogs by westerners. Once again, its cape isn't a fashion statement, it resembles volcanic smoke. Its name comes from Enten, Japanese for blazing heat, and Kote, or emperor. Suicune is most probably based on the Chilin, which could walk on water, and a leopard. I mean, the way it runs swiftly in the anime reminds me of a leopard. Its name could come from Japanese for water area, Suiki, and Kun, meaning monarch. It's also the mascot for Crystal Virgin, and wouldn't you know, Suisho is Japanese for crystal. So all three beasts are named after their element and a term for ruler. Lugia looks like a plesiosaur and may be based on Ryujin, the Shinto god of the sea. A beluga whale may have been thrown in there, but I'm not complaining. Beluga may have even contributed to its name. Lugia may be derived from lutetium, a silvery white metallic element, or it may get its name from Lugio, the Latin word meaning to grieve or lament, alluding to how Lugia's brass tower was burnt down. Yeah, I'd be sad if my home burnt down too. Ho-Oh is basically a combination of every phoenix legend, most notably the Chinese phoenix, Fun Huang. In Japan, this bird is literally pronounced Ho-Oh, so its name was never a mystery. Now, Celebi itself is a nature spirit and most cultures have some kind of nature spirit, like fairies or dryads or kodamas. Its name may be an abbreviation of celestial being, or serenity and be, meaning beauty in Japanese. How beautiful. It's now time for Generation 3 and its Hoenn legendaries. The Reggie Trio is based on the golems of Hebrew legends, who are servants to their creators and are said to have Hebrew writing on their head. I made a whole video on their origin more than a year ago, so check that out because these Pokemon are really interesting, but once again, it's old. But these three also represent the Stone Age, Ice Age, and Iron Age of human history. Their name comes from Reggie, meaning to rule or control in Latin, and each of their respective types. So their names literally show that they're the kings of rock, ice, and steel. Latios and Latios appear to be physically based on a jet plane and a dragon, but the concept of the two probably comes from the Aeons in Gnosticism. In fact, they are probably without a doubt based on the Aeons since the 
these two are called the Eon Duo. Aeons are immortal spirits that can come in pairs of male and female. Their names may derive from Lateo, Latin for I am hidden or I am concealed, and As and Os at the end of both their names indicate which one is female and which one is male. Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza are based on the Hebrew legends of the Behemoth, Leviathan, and Ziz, all primal masters of the respective domain, being land, ocean, and sky. In fact, the Behemoth and Leviathan are said to battle to the death at the end of time, like these two little rascals. Kyogre seems to be the only of the Weather Trio to physically be based on its origin, since the Leviathan was depicted as a huge fish, and in fact the Hebrew word for whale, Leviathan, evolved from Leviathan. Kyogre though mostly appears to be an orca, a species of dolphin, who educated people like ourselves know are not fish. Kyogre and the Japanese Kyoga may be a combination of Kyo, ocean in Japanese, and orca, the species of dolphin known as the killer whale. Ogre is also the name for a big monster. It may also derive from a tidal phenomenon known as Eager. The behemoth that Groudon is based on kinda looks like a warthog hippo, and Groudon does not, cause he mostly looks like a Tyrannosaurus crossed with an Ankylosaurus. It's probably not a coincidence that both Pokemon based on Ankylosaurus are also classified as the continent Pokemon. Or it could be a coincidence, I don't know. Groudon's name is a portmanteau of Ground and Dawn, meaning King or Tooth. And we all know that Groudon's got lots of tooths. While Rayquaza's lore is based on the Ziz, he physically looks like a lindworm or the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, or Quetzalcoatl as the Americans say. Rayquaza most likely refers to Rakia, the Hebrew word for firmament, which is anything that has to do with the sky as a physical object. Alternatively, it may be a combination of the Japanese words that combine to roughly translate to one that sits in the ferocious heavens, which I think is a glorious image. Jirachi is based on the concept of wishing on stars, and the tags of paper on its head are references to the paper strips written on the Tanabata festival. Its name may derive from Jalat, which is Russian for to wish, and it may involve Sachi, a Japanese name meaning blissful or fortunate. Jire, the Anglicanized version of Yire, which means we'll see in Hebrew, may be involved as a reference to its third eye. And and finally, Deoxys is based on exactly what it is, an alien and a visual representation of the DNA double helix. Its name is also an abbreviation for DNA, which itself is an acronym for deoxyribonucleic acid. And there you go, the origins of all legendary and mythical Pokemon from generations 1 to 3. If you enjoyed, please leave a like so I know that I should make part 2. If you haven't, subscribe to see more. Click the top rectangle to see a video about Pokemon that share origins, and the bottom video to see my top 10 nostalgic Pokemon list. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter to ask any questions you have, and I'll see you guys very soon.